Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hi, this is George Widom reporting for Widom's World. Well, this week we've got a few questions I've grouped together because they all have one common thread, and that is dynamics. How do you control the volume from quiet to loud? So let me go through these questions here, and I'll do a live demonstration in my trusty Twisted Wave software demonstrating how to control dynamics. So the first question we have about dynamics and dynamic range is actually from Yvonne Schwemmer. Yvonne asks, George, I've run across a spec list for voice talent that reads in part as follows. Specs. Often our clients require work for broadcast distribution. For this reason, all work should be delivered at the following specs. Minus 24 LKFS. Please do not compress the heck out of your audio and send exceptionally loud or exceptionally soft files. The clients and agencies we work with expect uniform level consistency. And when one is not at the correct broadcast level, it stands out but not in the good way you want it to. Can you explain LKFS and how to achieve the measurement that's referenced here? Okay, well, in the last few years, we've had a problem with what we call in the music business, the loudness wars. And that's come across for many different reasons, but one of the primary reasons is tastes in how music is mastered. And that really came along in especially the late 90s to 2000s with CDs and the oncoming pop music uh, genre of grunge music, think Nirvana, that kind of thing, where it was all about loud, edgy sound. And to get that loud, edgy sound, we started using more and more compression. And in the process of using more compression, more limiters, and even using more clipping and peaking uh, devices that allow our levels to creep up and up, We've had this loudness war where there's certain volume or average volume that's gotten way out of hand in the pop music world, that is. Because of this, the industry has realized it's time to do something about it. Let's take back control over loudness, bring it down to a reasonable amount, and let's set some standards as to what that standard volume should be. Now, in voiceover, there is no standard of loudness in general over the across the board. That standard of loudness is something that's completely judged by whoever's producing the product, okay? However, in certain genres, we do have loudness standards that we try to achieve. In audiobooks, for example, especially ACX has specified, they want an average level somewhere between minus 23 and minus 18 dB, average RMS level. So they, they've kind of set a standard for themselves for their niche of the voice over recording world. And so that's what we're often trying to shoot for. L 24 LKFS is another way of basically saying a similar thing, but using a different term of measurement. So what's LKFS? I'll read you the Wikipedia definition, and then I'll try to demystify it a little bit. But LKFS is loudness K-weighted relative to full scale. LKFS is a loudness standard designed to enable normalization of audio levels for delivery of broadcast TV and other video. LKFS is standardized in ITU RBS.1770. In March 2011, the ITU introduced a loudness gate in the second revision of the recommendation, ITU RBS 1770 2. In August 2012, the ITU released the third revision of this recommendation, ITU RBS 1770 3. Loudness units relative to full scale, or LUFS, is an acronym for LKFS that is used in the EBU or Europe. Their standard, which is the R28 R128 standard. The EBU has suggested that the ITU change the unit of LUFS as LKFS does not comply with scientific naming conventions and is not in line with the standard set out in ISO 8000 Furthermore, it suggests the symbol for loudness level K weighted should be L lowercase K. Therefore, LK equals LUFS, or LUFS in case of value LK with reference to digital full scale, since ITU RBS 770 2, LKFS and LUFS are identical. So in other words, LKFS, LUFS, and basically they're a measurement of average volume. How they're actually measured is something I'm not going to even get into right now. This You can go on YouTube, do a search for LKFS, and you will find some really educational stuff about it. I'm not going to get there right now. But I will say it's really just very similar to average RMS levels. So in Twisted Wave, if I go to my F or file analyze function, you can see that there actually is two different measurements being shown here, average RMS and LUFS. And you'll see that they are very, very similar. 
so similar that I'm not even concerned about really differentiating between the two for the purposes of a voiceover actor recording themselves in a home studio. If you are a mastering engineer or a broadcast engineer, then you can worry about what those two values mean, how they're different, and how to achieve perfection at those two settings. But for your needs, don't really worry about it. If your software has the ability to analyze and measure and it only gives you the option of average RMS, the two of them are almost completely the same. They're very similar, close enough that they're pretty much interchangeable. And that is, again, the average volume or power of the, of the audio throughout the entire track. So this particular piece of audio I'm sampling is an average RMS of minus 20.52 dB, which, according to the specification that, that the, Yvonne mentioned, to that particular client, they would think that was a little bit too high. They wanted it to be around minus 24 LKFS not minus 23.4 LUFS. Remember, LUFS, LKFS, totally interchangeable. So how would we achieve that? Well, in this case, since we know our LUFS is minus 20.34 dB, we can. there's one really easy way. How do you go from minus 20 to, mi to minus 24? How about reduce the volume? So I'll go to F for amplify, change it by minus 4 dB, Turn it down, analyze, presto. We now have a LUFS of minus 24.34. That's one easy way. That's the easiest way. What they didn't specify is your peak levels. But it seems that these days, now that people are getting a better understanding of what LUFS or average volume RMS means, peaks are getting less and less important. So um, your ear really perceives volume more based on the average volume than what the peak settings are set to. But I still, you know, when I'm sending out audio for consistency's sake, I still have a, a tendency to normalize everything to minus 3 dB. So if I was to normalize that to minus 3 dB, it goes back up again and goes back to minus 20.43. Bottom line is, if the client actually goes out of their way enough to tell you that they want something like minus 24 LKFS, then try to give it to them and just measure the audio that you've already recorded and just change the overall volume to match. Now, if your tool actually has a normalized function that lets you set the levels to that value of minus 24, then you have an advantage. I can hit normalize, choose normalize to LUFS and type in minus 24. Whoops, minus 24. And take all the guesswork out of it. There you go. Now my audio is set to a, a LUFS of minus 24 dB. That's pretty much all there is to it. It's easy with short bits of audio, but with longer bits of audio, where there's a lot of dynamic range, that can be harder. So how can we change the dynamic range? 